Right, first flight guys, uh, I've actually got the, the camera set up looking at the screen uh, because for some reason when I plugged the, uh, the DVR into the power supply uh, it's creating noise so I probably need some sort of ferrite ring or LC feeder on the power lead for this so that it doesn't enjoy, uh, induce noise into the video so um, I'm going to record the screen this way I've got the run cam HD running on the quadcopter it is all a bit Heath Robinson but really all I want to do is just see if I can notice the difference with the tattoo batteries that's what we're out here for today and of course running the uh, the RSSI Pro Tracker through its paces so let's get this thing in the air make sure there's no one around all clear Now this is my night vision quad, so it's in black and white and for some reason the lens is causing an aberration which is making it glare, which isn't ideal, uh, but as long as I can see well enough to fly I'm alright with that, let's go and have a look around. As you can see the tracker's tracking the quad, um, I've only got a, a low milliwatt. video transmitter on the quadcopter uh, and as you can see absolutely no video break up at all well, let's give this thing a bit of a gun and that was my first ever roll uh, whether the video gear that I've been using has been making me nervous or whether I just needed to switch over and practice more on manual mode, I don't know. But um, I've definitely got the confidence to do it now. That was not stressful. And uh, not too shabby. Even though I do say so myself. Let's have a little look around this end. Get the old tracker to switch around a bit. There I am with the car park behind me. Nice, loving this. Oh, do I go for a flip? Don't know if my ass can handle that much. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what, I might do. I might uh, induce the Fresnel zone slightly. There's some trees there. Never been behind these, really. If you're doing something like this, I'm guessing you should probably walk it first. But there you go. A little bit of scratchiness behind those big thick trees and bushes. And out the other side. Well, I definitely thought I'd get a lot more video break up than that. Bearing in mind that's almost the other end of the field. That was a real good Fresnel. There's the bushes I went behind, guys. And there's the, the low voltage alarm. So, I just finished my lap. I've got it set quite conservatively. I don't want to stress out my batteries too much. And this was, or is, the second flight of the two. So, let's get back as quick as we can. This footage that you're seeing on here is a backup just in case I get problems with the DVR again because last night I took off, went straight up about, I don't know, about 150 feet and did a roll and uh, it didn't bloody record it. Must upset I was. So, let's get this thing in the air, shall we? He says confidently. Right, so this is the ta uh, Tattoo 75C. Looks like daylight out there, doesn't it? I'll show you. It's not. Getting a bit of video break up. There we go. Uh, the video break up was 
while the acquisition was happening I obviously didn't put the uh, the quad far far enough away uh, you're supposed to put it a good 20 feet away when setting it up and that allows it to uh, acquire a solid track but I could hear <coughs> I could hear the uh, the track are not moving which was when we were getting the bit of video break up now though look at that lovely and solid see now good pilot be wishing around between them trees down there wouldn't I and that's the difference between me and a good pilot <laughs> a good pilot I am not certainly seems a lot more sprightly I have been running this on the five fours which has really been killing the batteries quickly <coughs> uh, so I've swapped down the gem fan five threes on these little 1806 motors I think I've got the RC timer ones on this on the racer X which I've been using for the night vision uh, and they've had a good beating and they've had plenty of use and I've put all sorts of props and battery configurations on which you shouldn't really and they're still going all right and they are as cheap as chips I prefer Cobras uh, and I believe I'll be trying out some DYS props soon there we go big Fresnel zone uh, violation there going between or behind that tree going through these bushes here there's maybe five or six trees between us <coughs> there it is weird hearing it pop up beside me uh, well not beside me but I can hear it in the distance to the right of me it's a bit weird so um, oh look at the shadow from the moon you see that down there it's superb loving this I'm hoping I should get a little bit longer times on the 5.4s on my Zippy Compacts uh, 4S 1000s um, I wasn't really getting much of a flight you know it's giving me a minute or so and then hitting the voltage alarm uh, those batteries are very tired and really <coughs> these little motors aren't really up to 5.4s much better on the gen fan 5.3s really a beginner set up this but for night flying I just wanted something I could waft around comfortably with uh, I'm not used too much power so that's why I went with these for that moon <laughs> so bright I'm actually getting more noise off this uh, recording or in this recording than I normally do um, hopefully the DVR is working so that you can see it properly um, there are a few issues showing up on the screens which I haven't seen before using this setup so I'm guessing it's my my VTX configuration or maybe that the, uh, the VTX that's in there is on its way out I've, uh, I've crashed quite badly with that VTX on I've snapped the poles off it's been resoldered I'm sure those of you that have flown a bit know the score with all that um, so at some point it has been partially uh, touching the transmitter which is uh, not good for the VTX at all being in that in that state so I've just ordered myself a couple of the UBAD VTX's um, from ubuyadrone.com uh, I posted a a question on one of the Facebook walls the other day I'm actually designing a, a T6 copter for crafty copters at the moment um, and I wanted a nice compact well thought of you know reliable video transmitter and uh, I asked the question and I think it got 
about 15 thumbs up and recommendations within a matter of minutes um, so I popped on to you buy a drone and um, put in an order for a couple of those uh, I've ordered the ones with the the lead with the SMA bulkhead on so that I can uh, mount the VTX where I want and then just put the antenna through the, the top plate uh, that's a configuration that I like to run when possible nice to see manufacturers doing that now without the need for extra SMAs pain in the arse to buy uh, so pretty pleased with that signal this far don't know how long I've been in the air but um, having a nice thought I heard the alarm then having a nice little fly around uh, not showing any signs of drop out really have poked it in some nasty situations there good solid video link and that uh, super starlight cam from Saval Zone well when a moonlit night like this that's as good as day night really in fact it might even be overexposing it ever so slightly <laughs> but I'm not complaining that's lovely as long as I can see the fly it's good for me it's nice you know when it's been really hot like it uh, like it should be um, to come out in the evenings when it's a bit cooler and the sun's gone down just have a nice chill out nice chill out flight you know just having a little waft around loving it again low a long way away um, not in an area where there's a clear line of sight to the copter I'm getting a really good signal very very pleased with that oh. trying my best not to go fast there I am just wanted to fly through this bit so you could see where I actually was there I am there of interference there wondering whether some of the light frequencies that are uh, are out there are causing a bit of uh, break up I guess the guy to ask the question would be Alex Grove from Video Aerial Systems but he's not here <laughs> so maybe send him the video and ask him what he thinks because I don't know lovely though really really nice this racer x is flying superb really cheap little motors uh i've got a q brain in this one so all in one solution very very easy to set up uh most people will prefer to have separate ESCs that way if you pop one you've only got to change the one ESC but I tried the Q-Brain and I loved it right there goes the low battery alarm got plenty of time to get back now I've made some adjustments but let's not let's not push our luck there I am at the top of the hill so I just wanted to get an idea of what it would be like to fly with this battery <laughs> on, a, on a 3S oh, sorry, I'll fly with this battery on 5.3s and now I know, lovely, really good long flight time really really impressed with that um, I've got a few more cells and to put out there but be interesting to see what that flight time was i wasn't battering around you know i'm no chad nowak or luke bannister uh but i did enjoy that flight and most people now will be sitting at home thinking oh i wish i could go for a fly and i am out here flying just with the the assistance of moonlight and it's not even a full moon i think we're uh we're just under a full moon at the moment so over the next three or four days I'll be able to come out after dark 
and uh, enjoy a flight. Right, I'm going to go and turn that battery alarm off so I don't upset the horses behind me and I'll see you all in the next video.